Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. Sign up for a one-week free trial, no credit card required, for access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey guys, it's James Kim. I'm coming to you from the Chart Guys. It is Tuesday, March 27th, and wanted to do a video on some fundamental research uh, to tie in with technical analysis and uh, most of this fundamental research is based on some of the geopolitical things that have been happening in the background um, that a lot of people may not be paying attention to and how it may be being accelerated to the to the forefront with Trump and his uh, recent tariffs on China and how you know the news of trade wars and, and this and that um, how all these things tie in together and what the charts are telling me uh, longer term, mid to longer term on gold, U.S. dollar and oil, particularly the U.S. dollar and gold. So anyways, give you a little bit of a background. So you know that Trump's imposed some tariffs uh, as proposed tariffs on China that equal 30 to 60 billion on Chinese imports. And it's mainly going to target the tech sector. And a lot of this is, is due to the $375 billion trade deficit that we have with China. But uh, more importantly, there has been some alleged theft of intellectual properties and this is brought about mainly because um, if you're a foreign company and you want to transact business in China, they uh, generally uh, they generally make it a law where you have to work with partner with a Chinese company. And so when you do that and you work on technology, um, obviously trade secrets and, and research can <clears throat> easily be taken advantage of in those type of partnerships. So anyways. Uh, going back further into history, I'm going to talk about the gold standard and how the U.S. dollar used to be on the gold standard. And so uh, really what the gold standard is, it's basically a value of currency, which is defined in terms of gold. And so what it's saying is that a certain amount of U.S. dollars is worth this much amount of gold. Um, and for the, for example, if the U.S. wanted to increase its currency that's in circulation, you would have to increase the gold revenues that back that gold. Um, obviously, that's not the case anymore. The U.S. dollar is now on a fiat currency, uh, and we got, and the U.S. dollar completely went away from any type of, uh, any type of ties with gold in 1971, where the Nixon shock, which he ended the uh, international convertibility of the U.S. dollar to gold. So countries that were holding gold back then uh, could exchange those U.S. dollars for a particular amount of gold. And so uh, Nixon ended that in 1971. And, and really, uh, since then, gold hasn't been backed by, uh, the U.S. dollar hasn't been backed by gold or any really any asset. And so we considered a fiat currency. And so uh, there was something called the Bretton Woods Agreement, and that happened a little bit before the end of World War II, basically as World War II was coming to an end. Um, and the U.S. dollar at that time was selected um, you know, we say selected, but uh, it seems like more imposed on as the world reserve currency. And uh, the reason why was because the U.S. was uh, essentially the strongest economic power industrially um, at the time. And we had also accumulated over 70 percent of gold reserves uh, that were in the world, circulating in the world at the time. And so at the time, we decided that the U.S. dollar was well, the Bretton Woods Agreement decided that the U.S. dollar would be backed at about thirty dollars, five dollars per per ounce. Um, and again, any country could exchange those dollars for gold. And so that's what the U.S. had promised, the convertibility of those U.S. dollars to gold. And then this goes into the IMF and, and those things like that and, uh, and the World Bank. But I'll let you do your own research on that. I don't want to make too long of a video going over <clears throat> the depths of, of history. Uh, just wanted to give everyone a little bit of a background. Um, and so... Because the U.S. dollar was no longer backed by gold, it had to find another way to retain its value. You know, you can't just have it. You can't. Well, essentially, I guess they did. You, you have to have something to give it some type of strength. Uh, you need the world to be dependent on the U.S. dollar to give it some strength. And so in 1974, the then U.S. Secretary of State, Harry Kissinger, had a series of meetings with the Saudi royal family. And what the U.S. said would was that they would provide military aid and equipment to Saudi Arabia um, in exchange to buy their oil um, and that the U.S. would essentially buy most of their oil 
but the but Saudi Arabia, what they had to agree was to price all their oil sales exclusively in the U.S. dollar, and that they would be open to investing their surplus of oil proceeds in uh, U.S. debt securities, you know, things like treasury bonds um, and things like that. And so this was a very attractive deal to 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 Saudi Arabia and to other Middle East countries. And by 1975, all OPEC nations agreed to price their oil in U.S. dollars. And so this gives U.S. dollars an incredible amount of strength if if oil, which is the lifeblood of any economy, especially when you're building infrastructure, uh, especially after world, you know, a period after World War II, and and when uh, there were a lot of emerging economies, you know, after this deal was made, uh, such as China, that if you're going to grow your country, you are going to need oil to run it. Such factories, anything, almost essentially ran on oil at the time. And so because of that, U.S. has so much power now um, because all oil is traded by U.S. dollars. And the U.S. dollar is no longer on the gold standard. They don't have to increase their gold reserves to print more money. And so we're just sitting here printing money, right? So we have absolute control of oil. Um, and in turn, if we have control of oil, we can, we can call it imperialism. We can control and manipulate other countries through the power of oil. And so next we're going to talk about uh, the Chinese foreign trade. And so if, if you need U.S. dollars to uh, acquire oil, then countries are going to scramble to acquire U.S. dollars. And one way of doing that, uh, that China can do that, but in, for example, is they can devalue their currency. If you devalue your currency, um, if now one U.S. dollars equals one one Chinese yuan, or let's it was once worth one Chinese yuan, but now it's worth uh, two Chinese yuan, you can essentially take your dollar and buy more of Chinese goods. And if you are a comp corporation or company, you're going to favor taking your business to China for manufacturing or and for labor. It's cheaper and you get more for your money. And so this was another way that China could acquire U.S. dollars. You, you're ex exporting more Chinese goods than you're importing foreign goods. And so if you have foreigners buying it, particularly the U.S., and that trade deficit, you're acquiring a lot of U.S. dollars. And so that's what China did for a while. That, that's one way they would could accumulate the U.S. dollars. Um, but I think that China devaluing their currency, especially recently, I think it was in as, as, uh, as not that long ago, 2016, they valued their currency pretty big time. I think it was for the long game. And I really think it's it's... China trying to take away some power from the U.S. Um, and obviously, the U.S. is the absolute biggest military power in the world. You can take the next eight military powers, combine them, and the U.S. is still uh, much more powerful. And so if you're going to try to challenge the might of the U.S. as the uh, world, as the number one world superpower, you're not going to beat them through the military. And so it has to come through finance. And so seeing the seeing China devalue their their, their currency, um, I think it'll make sense when I talk about some of the other things I'm going to talk about here. Um, and so there's this group of countries called the BRICS countries, and, and that essentially stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And what these countries have been doing in recent years is they have been increasing their supply of gold reserves. Um, you could see, if you go do your own research, you can see that all these countries are, 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 are now... Uh, gathering gold, they're, they're mining for more gold. Um, and so what they're trying to do, these BRIC countries, are they're trying to establish a single gold trade system. And I believe China and Russia are leading that charge within this BRICS country, uh, this BRICS country system or partnership where they are uh, exclusively trading gold with each other. Um, and the reason why that's important is because of Chinese oil futures. So now you know that we know that you the oil was only trading solely oil was trading solely on U.S. dollars. The U.S. had absolute control of U.S. Um, of oil and and particularly pricing. Right, we could manipulate our dollar. We could do so many different things uh, through uh, through government policies and things like that to manipulate the dollar and oil prices, and uh, we could control other countries that were either exporting oil or needed oil to grow. And so this takes, this is a major turn where, you know, where now we have the Yuan Chinese oil futures and no longer trading just on, uh, you know, 
West Texas and the Brent crude uh, exchanges. And so it's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out because oil, Chinese oil futures just opened up. But whereas the U.S. dollar and U.S. dollar oil futures aren't backed by gold, the Chinese oil futures are backed by gold. And uh, what that allows what that allows countries like China and Russia to do uh, now, Russia doesn't have to deal with the U.S. and oil. They can exclusively go through China, who then they are, you know, obviously they are allies and would rather much rather deal with each other than with the U.S. And then you have countries like Iran who are readily sanctioned by the U.S. Um, and their oil exports and all things like that. They can now circumvent the U.S. and go through China. And so it's going to be very interesting to see um, how this how this game plays out in in 2018 and again this is going to take some time i don't think that chinese oil futures is is going to replace the uh, u.s dollar oil futures anytime soon uh, um, for you know the for for power but it could be um it could take some time but it could slowly go towards that way it's more it's more attractive china has the value of their currency so it's cheaper um now their currency is backed by gold whereas u.s is backed by nothing and so this this long finance game that China has been gearing up for for a long time, uh, we no longer can just scare China with these tariffs. Um, and so knowing all these things is very important and seeing things on the chart technically is very important. Um, and so. So now I just want to go over some of the technicals and how how things might be playing out in the longer term, knowing uh, knowing this background where the US has now printed all its has printed tons of money not backed by gold we could essentially control a lot of countries through oil and now that China has brought another option up backed by gold um, it's going to be very interesting how how the world power can shift um, economically here and so it did just open uh, Chinese oil futures did just open, so we'll see how it goes. But I would just want to go over some technicals now and see how these, how what type of technicals I would be watching for in the near and 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 further future here on gold, U.S. dollar, and oil. So looking at some technical analysis, I'm going to start with the U.S. dollar. And um, again, um, even though the Trump tariffs have brought up these geo geopolitical events to the forefront now. Uh, you have to understand these type of things go on for you have been happening for years before um, Trump's tariffs and, and these countries have been preparing for all sorts of things and, and in the background uh, to try to take the upper hand economically. Uh, and so looking at the U.S. dollar, um, you can clearly see the weakness here on the monthly charts where uh, we did show strength here. We, this, this was the high. And then since the high, we, we broke the, the support here of 91 91 90 and once we broke that support we did have a bit of a bounce here but that was just a that was that was just consolidation for another dump here and so we could continue to see the dollar weaken um, and on any dollar bounce at this point longer term the monthly needs to break above this recent uh, attempt at this high and that's at 9515 we have uh, we have it at we have one monthly candle 9515 we have one at 95 Point one four nine. So that's essentially your your double top here of the bounce here that you you want to that U.S. dollar wants to break uh, to to bring back strength to the U.S. dollar. Uh, and so we could see this pattern run for a while where we ha we have a dump here, we have consolidation dump, and, and continue to stair step down. And so that's definitely something to watch with this loss here of this uh, of this low of ninety one ninety one ninety. That's the longer term, and then breaking the recent support here of ninety one point zero one one. Uh, and so the support to watch for the next downside at this point is obviously going to be the low that we've established here at 88.253 on the dollar. And so there hasn't there hasn't been any type of real significant bounce when you look at this longer term chart from the top. It just continued to show weakness. Uh, and again, uh, this is something that you need to be prepared for um, longer term and, and keep an eye out as these geopolitical events unfold. You have you're talking about India, Russia, and China. China and India particularly. Uh, the two largest population countries in the world and they're buying up gold um, and they're continuing to grow their gold reserves and their appetite for gold has been huge so we really need to keep in mind that uh, if, if economic power starts to shift more and more towards uh, these BRICS countries and their currencies are being backed by gold um, as as a uh, potential 
hedge for the U.S. dollar, you know, there could be uh, people buying up bulk gold, um, obviously in Europe and in the U.S., and other people who have their interests in, in the, tied in the U.S. dollar. Looking at the weekly on the U.S. dollar, every time we've been over, gotten under the 30 RSI, we've had some type of bounce here. And so 30 RSI, we are at a bounce point. But look at the, the, the significant, these bounces have been so weak. They're, they're just still continuing to uh, set lower highs here. And just consolidation, they're just oversold bounces. And um, and if we get an oversold bounce at this point on the weekly, the weekly, we need the dollar needs to break, <clears throat> in my opinion, the high of this, this bounce attempt here. Uh, from the lows at 90.932 then we have may have a longer term uh, bounce play out uh, but i don't see much more of a significant bounce until that monthly chart really changes on the u.s dollar so the u.s dollar is definitely looking weak right now looking at gold now longer term looking at the monthly so gold obviously during the financial crisis uh, shot up um, and then pulled back as we showed some strength in the economy. This is the this is the candles I'm very interested in. So we have uh, 16, 13, 65, 40. This is the monthly chart. 16, 40, 6, 13, 65, 40. We have a 13, 64, 40, and we have a 13, 62, 60 top on the monthly. We have an inside candle here on the monthly. Let me zoom in a little bit. The high and low are within the previous range is high and low. Um, and we have, it's Tuesday, 27th. We have a few more trading days left in this month. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if, if, if this, if we're able to close the month above uh, 1364.40 on increasing bull volume, um, I'm very interested to see how much gold runs at this point. Uh, we've already broken this, this, this uh, resistance at 1362.40 on this candle. And so, Essentially, at the low, this low here on gold monthly, uh, we set a, a higher high and pull back. We set a higher low, and then we set another higher. I'm sorry, we had a low. We established a high here on the bounce. Excuse me. We set a uh, a higher low, and then we broke to a higher high. Now we're just it's finding some price discovery here, um, and so I'm going to be very interested if gold can break these. This it's basically a triple top when something's trading at. 1360 range in that price type level and so i'm going to really watch this monthly chart and see if it's able to close above last month of 1364.40 watch the bull volume um, if, if, if it's able to do so so we have consecutive monthly candles of of lower highs here um, at its tops and so look for a break potentially this this month of 1364.40 and if not uh in april i'll be watching for if the high is in for this month of 1362.60, I'll be looking for a break of that. And if we break that, um, our next resistance is at 1377.50, then 1392.60, and 14.34. If we break 13.34, because of the severity of this dump, there isn't going to be that much resistance until uh, potentially we get all the way up to the 17. Uh, 98 level and again this is a long-term view it's not I don't think it's gonna happen in a year or, or you know it may potentially take multiple years for this to play out but it's certainly something worth watching with all these geopolitical events going on longer term looking at weekly charts looking at weekly charts the support to be watching for here at this point on gold is at 1303.60 um, anything that gold forms above uh, 130360 I think is going to be pretty good for consolidation here um, th the gold has now held the 1300 level uh, whereas previous breaks above the 1300 level the last break above the 1300 level wasn't able to hold by the bulls and it and completely pulled back and so a very key area here on the weekly monthly let me go back to the monthly chart the monthly chart um, Really, anything above 1238.30. So we could pull back here, um, and we'd still form a, a higher low on the monthly as long as bulls can hold above 1238.30. And so, again, this is a chart to be watching longer term uh, with those resistances and supports. Uh, but it's going to be very interesting as it plays out with these geopolitical events and, and the creation of the, the, the Chinese, um, Chinese oil futures backed by gold. And that really does give an advantage to China, in my opinion, longer term, because it's more attractive. Why would you not want to uh, trade 
commodities in a currency backed by gold, whereas the U.S. dollar is backed by nothing except for our government policies and, and, our, and our economy. So very, very going to be very interesting, I think, in the coming years to watch gold and oil as things play out. And looking at the oil chart, you could say you could you could say that oil has been bullish for multiple factors. It could be due to the U.S. dollar weakness that makes oil cheaper uh, because it's price hit oil. So other currencies. So if the U.S. dollar is going down, then now your currency is becoming stronger. Um, well, ideally stronger than the U.S. dollar, and so you're able to buy more oil with your currency. But there's always those games where other countries will, will devalue their currency with the U.S. to balance it out. Uh, but you, you guys can re do more depth and research in that. But uh, chart guys have, have been bullish oil all into the basically middle of, of 2000, 2017, um, all the way in, in 2018 here. Uh, and it's been pretty pr pretty bullish here on oil as well, uh, leading into all these political events. And the weekly here, if you look at the weekly, the weekly here has been very strong. Uh, bulls have been buying the dip here off the 20 MA on the back test of the weekly. And now we have a pretty big range here that, that it, it could we could just be in a range here for a while. That's going to make because of this move in oil, it does need some consolidation. It needs some price discovery. It needs to uh, find uh, some type of balance here before it moves up again or down. But we're looking at the, the resistance here of 66.66 and the range of uh, 58. I'm looking at, well, I am personally, uh, 58.07 here. And we could just see oil range in here for a while before we see a break. Uh, that's very possible. It wouldn't be the first time that oil weekly just ranged for a while. You can see it back here in 2016. It was just completely in a range for a long time before uh, before doing anything here. It just ranged in this price. Look at this price range. It ranged between so just ranged in between the high here of 55.24 and this low here of 30 39.19. It just ranged for a long time until this breakout happened. And so we could range for a while, uh, but again, my outlook on these on on the this video with these fundamentals is I'm looking at the longer term charts for mostly for longer term investors. Uh, looking at the monthly here, you can see that the high of the the high of the bounce so far in oil had been at 62.58, uh, and we've broken past that. And if you see the severity of the dump here on on oil, just like gold. Uh, because of the severity of the dump, it didn't create much resistance uh, on the way down. And so, I'm sorry, it didn't create much, there wasn't much support created on the way down. So there isn't going to be much resistance um, on this break since it's broken at 62.58. And so this longer term chart does favor the bulls here at this point on the, on the monthly. Uh, and bulls could pull back. And as long as they stay below the low of this candle here at 42.05, they're still going to establish a higher low on the monthly. And so bull could... Oil bulls could have a pullback significantly and still be bullish longer term. And so these are all things to keep in mind. Uh, again, I just wanted to give you some background on potentially how fundamentals and technicals could be lining up here with these geopolitical events coming to the forefront with Trump's policies. And so do your own research. Uh, there, I, We always do short-term technical analysis as well, but I'm just looking long-term for long-term investors and, and what all these events will mean on the charts. Have a good night and I will see you tomorrow.